From Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. So, John, I feel your pain. We have a lot to read through. <laughs> yeah, I think it was strategic. <laughs> so then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But we hope for what we do not see. We wait for it with patience. The reading of God for the people of God. We're going to try this. I've got access to change the screen up here. I don't know that I'm coordinated enough to do it, so Carrie's got my back if I <laughs> One of the questions that was asked um, of me during my pre-ordination council by someone you might all know <laughs> was about the Holy Spirit. And I think my initial an uh, answer was, um, what do you want to know about it? <laughs> do you want to know what it is or what it does? Because there's just so much to this topic. And it's not something that we necessarily think or hear about on a daily basis. I mean, when was the last time that you have thought about the Holy Spirit? Well, this particular questioner, who shall remain nameless, didn't let me off the hook. And I must have stammered, <laughs> I must have stammered out something that was reasonably acceptable because I made it through. And so I've had the chance to think a lot about this question, about what the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does. And I've come to a very important conclusion. I still have a lot of questions. But today is Pentecost, so the Holy Spirit gets special recognition in churches all across the globe. Oh, no, see? Nope. Oh. Hands off. <laughs> to give context to what Paul is referring to when he says spirit in this passage, we can hear at the beginning of the chapter Paul says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. And although this language is Trinitarian, something we don't often talk about, especially in Protestant churches, um, specifically our disciples' churches, this Trinity language, this Trinity language of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost doesn't point to a doctrine. This language isn't meant to strictly define what the Holy Spirit is, but instead it's meant to point to the real life-giving power within God. 
It's a funny thing to be labeled as a Christian because so many people have turned it into an exclusive club, a hierarchy. But that's not what God is all about. And it's not what Jesus was all about either. Because God is always creating, redeeming, restoring, and including. Our Jesus taught us that. Even Paul, the one who gets a bad rap and has been in the hot seat for being too legalistic and divisive at times, is not trying to predict or verify who is in the circle of God and who is out. Sometimes when I'm preparing a sermon and I'm starting to look over the commentaries, I get to be excited about a single word. I was able to share that once with you all before when I found that tiny piece of subscript that changed a verse from faith in Jesus to the faith of Jesus. And I think I stumbled along something just as interesting in this passage today. From verse 17, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. In the middle of that verse, the words, if in fact, were translated from a word that also can be translated as since. So if we, if we read that verse again with the words, if in fact, replaced with since, we hear a different meaning something more in line with the language of what Pentecost is all about. Listen again with me. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, since we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Paul is not setting boundaries or trying to decipher who are the legitimate heirs of Christ, with Christ. He is saying that he is simply acknowledging and pointing out that suffering has happened to those who are following Christ. It's not a litmus test of if you suffer, then you will be able to be considered a joint heir. To be a child of God, to follow God's will as Jesus did, will inevitably lead to suffering because the ways and values of God are unfortunately not the ways and values of this world. But Paul was giving them something to look forward to, and not just something in the far off distant future. God's power is for all who face death dealing forces in their lives. In the midst of all the ways we might feel stuck and unable to see a way out, Paul invites us to receive the Spirit of God as completely as the Spirit of God receives us, which is unconditionally. The eager expectation Paul refers to in verse 19 is literally the act of straining one's neck to see what is coming down the road. We see it in nature when we see a tree or a small um, flower or plant that is struggling and twists its way to the sunlight. So for us it's possible with the eyes of faith to see late to see nature actually leaning toward its redemption. One of the causes of suffering for those who have received the spirit of adoption is that the spirit has given us reason to hope for more than we can see, and that can create frustration. Adoption into God's family is the work of the spirit. It is the spirit that leads us, the spirit that dwells within us, and the spirit that goes with us. But for some people, the use of the words father, mother, son, or daughter, or adoption can sting because some of, those, some of us don't associate those titles with good memories or any memories at all. But before we let that get in the way of hearing the good news of this passage, I bet that each of us can remember at least one positive, loving influence in our lives someone or someones who have mothered us or fathered us, who have, considers a, who have considered us their brothers or sisters, and we have considered them. So it's in that light that we can see that the Spirit makes it possible for the family of God to encompass all of us in whatever means necessary. 
The good news is that as God's children, we who have been adopted into the family of God share together a common inheritance of the Spirit of God. This thing that is sometimes so hard to define and hard to explain has been given to us as a gift. And as most inheritances are, not that I would know, but they come to us completely undeserved, but with the hope that with it we will be able, we will have the means to live our lives in a better way. With the Holy Spirit as our inheritance, we are given so much more than that. We are empowered as the sons and daughters of God, working for and waiting in hopeful anticipation of God's reign here on earth. So I would like to invite each of you this week to think about the ways the Spirit has been with you and will be with you as you face the challenges that come with being a follower of Christ. Amen.